I'm Wink Scurry, and I really appreciate y'all going to the Fusky with us today. Uh, I hope you have a great trip. Welcome to the trip to the Fusky. The boat is getting ready to depart, and I thought I'd give you a little information about the trip over to the Fusky. Now, uh, if you don't know where you are, you're on Broad Creek. Broad Creek divides Hilton Head in half. The far side over there is the south end of Hilton Head and the side we're on is the north end of Hilton Head. And as we cruise along, we're gonna cross under the Cross Island Expressway Bridge. But the de directly across the river from you is Wexford. Wexford is uh, one of the more high-end plantations on the island. It was uh, built in the 80s. It's got a lock marina, very much like the Panama Canal. You pump up the lock, you drive your boat in, you just drive on into the fresh water slip in front of your three or four million dollar house. You can't beat it. And uh, as we move on down the creek, uh, in the distance you see the bridge. That's the Cross Island Expressway Bridge. And before they built that bridge, it used to be uh, 30 or 40 more minutes to get off the island with a hurricane coming or some kind of emergency. That's why they built it. A lot of people didn't want it because it's 60 feet high and they just thought it was ugly. But the reality is people can get uh, off of that island a lot quicker in emergencies and that's why it's there. It was a toll bridge until lately, so you're lucky. You're lucky there's not any more. Also, this creek that we're on, Broad Creek, has been a harbor for Hilton Head forever. It started with the Indians and then it went to the Spanish, then it went to the English. Uh, and even in World War One, Broad Creek was used as a, a uh, a harbor to bring in ships uh, to the marine base that was at Palmetto Dunes. And uh, that was in 1919. So you've got uh, Indian ruins along the creek, you've got plantations along the creek, and prior to that you had uh, Spanish missions and, sh and so on. After you cross the Cross Island Expressway, if you look over to the right, that area over there is called Spanish Wells. And Spanish Wells was the first development uh, started on Hilton Head, almost exactly the time as Sea Pines. A guy named McIntosh out of Savannah uh, saw this beautiful property, divided it up into lots and sold it primarily to, to Savannah families. And they put little cabins, almost like little lake houses, thousand foot houses up on the hill. And then uh, after they crossed the, uh, after they built the Cross Island Expressway, it made all that downtown. And when it made all that downtown, they tore down the little houses and built these mega mansions that you see along the way. One was for sale a few years ago for $16 million. This whole, uh, uh, situation down here has been really built on uh, the smuggling industry uh, going all the way back to uh, prohibition. Uh, a friend of mine who was a judge remembers uh, sailboats coming in from mother ships bringing in rum from Barbados. In 1971, the largest marijuana bust in history took place here on Hilton Head. Uh, a bunch of college kids started selling uh, lids and ounces of pot and it grew into this huge deal where they were going all the way to, all the way into the Mediterranean to Libya to get hashish and bring it back. 
that when they, when they busted them, it was the largest uh, bust in American history. I don't know if it still is now. But my whole point is, the reason for this is because all of this area is 80 to 90 percent water. Beaufort County is 80 percent water at high tide. So there are hundreds of places to hide. That's why the pirates were here. That's why the smugglers were here. And you can go back into a a creek at high tide and your boat completely disappears at low tide. And uh, so until helicopters and all that kind of stuff, you couldn't beat it. It was the, an ideal place. When you get out in the sound, uh, if you look hard right, the captain can probably show you, this is a completely round island called Barataria Island. And uh, supposedly Blackbeard buried gold out there. And you can see it if you uh, see the island clearly. Uh, whether the gold has been found or not, I have no earthly idea. I know if I found it, I wouldn't tell anybody, so I don't know if anybody knows. Um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that you get is we're going to give you a map, and on the envelope that the map is going to be in will be a QR code. Open your camera, point it at the code, and you'll get the, the app. The app works with the map. So when you open the map up, it's got a bunch of pictures at the bottom and numbers all over the map. So when you get to number one on the map, you can go use that QR code. It will show you number one and it will tell you about number one so you're actually looking at it, okay? On the map, the way it works is when you drive in, you're at 14 or 15 on the map. Number, uh, the beach is number one. So to get to the beach, you drive from Freeport all the way to the other end of the island. And the reason uh, the beach is number one is that's as far away as you can get, right, from uh, Freeport. So when you get to the beach, hit the QR code and you'll find out about it. Number two on the map is the lighthouse. Number three on the map is the Silver Dew Winery and so on. One other trick that I want to make sure you get is if you get lost and you're roaming around the island and people do get lost, let's face it, but you see the church, right? Find a picture of the church on the map and let's say it says it's nine okay and find nine on the map and you'll know exactly where you are in your golf cart the whole trip if you don't stop around the island in a golf cart will take about two hours and uh that is if you don't stop walk the beach and all the other stuff I wanted to tell you that most people, when they get over to the island on the second boat, on the 11 o'clock boat, eat first, because that way you know how much time you've got. So the Defusky Crab Company's open, the food's great, we've got great seafood. And at the nine o'clock boat, you do it the opposite way. You go out in your golf cart, you go around and come back and have lunch before getting on the three o'clock boat to go back. Right now we're running two boats a day, when you're watching this, it may be three round trips a day or four, but it all works the same either way. Thank you very much.